What have we here? I had no idea it was going to be so easy to replace the shock cording on these Hildeberg tents. They have a end like that. They're really close there. You just press that out and I'm just going to take that shock cord out, tie a new piece on. The 70% is what long as this 12 foot pole. And uh, 0.7 times 12 is seven feet. Uh, seven times two is about eight feet or so. And uh, and that's it. That's all you do. So I'll replace. I'll replace this. I, I I'm gonna have to cut that and then dismember all these and put them in place. But uh, this is very doable. Okay. So now I've threaded it through as far as it'll go. That's about eight feet, a hundred inches. And I put a three extra inches just for the tie. And uh, there is the, the second ferrule that goes in the end of the pole. But now I gotta thread this through. Just take a look at the whole pole there. I gotta thread this through the remaining about five feet of pole. So how am I gonna do that? I've only got a foot of that. Well, I stretch this. Stretch it. Stretch it up so that I got enough cord. And stretched. That should do it. I'm gonna take a peg. And let's see if the friction will hold it. Oh, Greg. Okay, so that's a re-shock corded pole with all fresh shock cord. And uh, the right amount of tension. And there we go, the DAC pole, Featherlight NSL Green. These are 10 millimeter poles. And uh, there we go. Greg, you're about to put up your new tent. I am. So the poles all go in from one end. That's all handy. From one side, yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's do that. Since you did such a great job with the the shocking. Oh yeah, look at that. That's that's pretty good. Probably need one new section. Oh, that's great. Now you're doing the second hoop. Yeah, they all come in from this side. This goes at a 45 degree angle. And then we've got these Hildeberg lion tensioners, which are very, very good to use. Hello, so Jake. Oh, that's great. This was 500 US. It's the four man Kiron Hildeberg tent. Weighs about 10 pounds. Uh, what it would be really good for is backpacking with three and then you're taking three pounds each. And you got a bomb-proof shelter that's been through uh, the Antarctic and Arctic. And it's four-man tent. It's uh, got lots of nice livability features. It's not the G, I uh, can't remember, I think they call them the GTXs, which is the one with the great big vestibules. But this vestibule is big enough for your pack, your rifle, and then you got all this living space in here. So for three people, it's great. For four people, it's uh, it's usable. And for uh, two people, it's a pelvis. We got a pelvis gene. We're in a pelvis. Uh, oh, lots of great little features. Zippers are all in good shape. This guy. You can, uh, Great ventilation. Okay. That's great. Oops. Okay, you're on. It's a great tent. It's bright, roomy. Uh, I love the vestibule. If it's muddy or you can have all your boots and all your gear out in the vestibule and have your living area 
all uh, clean. Uh, it has two vestibules, one over here and one over there. Through the screen. And I think that's just, it's just great. Well, look at the space. Here, I'm six foot three. And I've got, I got a ton of room in here. Maybe not a ton of room, but enough, well enough room because it's got the nice flat ends. So this is considered a great tent for tall people, which Jane doesn't, well, never, well, never mind. I like lots of room, <laughs> so it's a good tent for me. Yeah, she's got a good foot and a half there. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I was a little nervous about buying it because of the condition, but uh, this material is just amazing. Like, look, the floor is a little scuffed up on the outside, but on the inside it looks brand new. Uh, remarkable. Remarkable. Love those vents, the two-way vents. They'll scoop right over the tent and, and vent both ways. The Hilleberg tents are supposed to be good for venting. You can sort of see why, and then you've got the door that uh, you can either close yourself off if you're in the wind or snow. James and I went on that hunt with a four-man tent, regular four-man dome tent, there was so much pressure from the wind that the inside lining tore away from the the outside, and it's uh, broken. I guess we could send it back and see if they'll fix it, but I lost confidence in the tent. That was up in the windstorms. We're going crazy. Waiting for the plane. This probably won't come today. Uh. <laughs> so I thought, man, it'd be nice to have a good base tent. Or if there's three of us going, we could carry this tent. It's not ideal, but boy, it sure would be nice living in here, eh? Oh, yeah. You could cook in there, too. You can cook in that guy. That's... In the wintertime, you can dig down so that there's a snow well there. So... Yeah, I'm really happy about this. That's a good buy. It's 500 US for a $1,200, $1,300 tent. Not, it's not shabby. I took a hundred. I got a hundred dollars off because the uh, there was no shock cord. The shock cord was shot in the in the poles, but I didn't realize how easy it was going to be to fix. Yeah, when I saw the condition of the shock cord, I was a little nervous for the tent, but the tent looks it's a great in great condition. Yeah, probably need one. Little pole replacement. Uh, you know, they got some great uh, features here. And this is this is our first time looking at this tent, so it's hardly a a real review. But you know, I've seen a lot of videos. One of the things I like is this this inside tent can come right off. You can then use it as a great big shelter. You have twenty five people in here, uh, and. When you set it up, because these are stayed attached, the inner and the outer, the inner doesn't get wet. So that's an amazing kind of... The Hilleberg, the tent people, you can't buy these in Canada. So Knowles brought this in, then sold it to our second-hand store, and then we picked it up from them. And I think we got lucky. Yep, well, it's good. Okay. It's fun to go out. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay. So Hilleberg Caron, Kiron, I don't know how you pronounce it, but uh, it's a great tent. You can't buy them in Canada. I'm really lucky to get a secondhand deal like we did. The fireproof regulations in Canada are fairly stringent, and Hilleberg refuses to bend to them because it makes the tents less breathable. So we get crap tents here. So anyway, I'm glad to have that. So big four-man tent. There's some advantages to that. Base camp when you're flying into a place and it's really nice to to have that this time we're going to bring extra food when we fly into a place too or when you drive into a place too you can use that at the trailhead uh i don't think we'll use it much for backpacking unless there's four people going three people going maybe it starts to become reasonable um really like the way it uh it's you can just tell that it's good in the wind and uh very happy about about it and I think we'll end off here. Bison hunting, it's also going to be good. Moose hunting uh, for the canoe season, I think it'll be really good. 
Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it works. I think it's going to be great. I mean, it's going to be great bison hunting. I don't always want to bring the 100 pounds of Arctic oven and stove and propane stuff and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes just a small, just a lighter tent that spills the wind and uh, bring a good bag and uh, don't spend all your time farting around. Just spend more time hunting bison. So I think that's what I might do more of next season. So we'll see how it all goes. Take you with us. Thanks for watching.